Luke chapter 18. We're not going to go there quite yet. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you for the day. I thank you for each and every person that you have brought here uh, to hear your word. Father God, I ask that you will silence the hearts. Father God, I ask that you will mend the broken. Father God, I ask that you will heal the sick. Father God, I ask, dear Lord, that your word will begin to penetrate and permeate, dear God, places that we're trying to keep out from you and off from you. Father God, I pray that you allow your sheep to grant you access to do the things that you need to do in their lives. Father God, I ask that you will comfort. Father God, I ask that you will convict. Father God, I ask that you'll console. Dear God, I'm asking that you hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Anoint my lips from upon high, Father. Give me the words to speak here today. Father God, don't let anything I say be what I want to say, Father God, but let everything I say be what you need me to say. Father God, not my words, not my thoughts, not my opinions, not my ideas, not my actions, dear God, but let it be from you. For, Father God, they came to hear your word. Father God, spiritually enrich them, Father Lord. Father, I pray that you will nourish them. Father God, I pray that you will strengthen and grow them. Father God, I pray that you will break the bread of life in front of us and allow us to feast. Father God, let us drink of the living water. And we will give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' precious, precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Who knows? Who remembers? Who remembers the story of Jericho? Raise your hand. Y'all got to be faster than that. Who remembers the story of Jericho? Raise your hand. Okay, now we're, we're, we're getting there now. Good. And shout out the book of the Bible that the story of Jericho is in. Go. One and a half of you. That's good, Joshua. And what, and go shout, y'all got to participate with me today. What was Jericho known for? Marching. I mean, you can do, marching? What was the other one? The walls, the walls, not the walls, but the wall, like the walls, the walls. And do you remember why the people of Jericho, does anyone know why they made the walls? They keep something out. See, the people in Jericho, they made the walls out of fear because they were afraid of the Israelites. And who are the Israelites? God's chosen. Me and you are smart. God's chosen people. And so the enemy made walls to keep out God's chosen because they were afraid of them. See, God's chosen, they were the ones that had received blessing from God. They, they had his favor. They were the apple of his eye. He was the one, they were the ones that he watched over. You know, he, he brought them out of Egypt with all those nasty plagues and he parted the Red Sea and they walked through it. And then as the Egyptians and Pharaoh started chasing them through the Red Sea, then the walls of the water came down and, and drowned all the bad guys. Remember that? And, and you remember after miracle, after miracle, after miracle, the, the people of Israel, the Israelites, God provided for them in a big way. And everybody who wasn't an Israelite began to gossip about the Israelites because they were scared to death of them. Because they knew when God's people started coming around, the fear of God spread throughout the land. And can you believe it spread without Twitter, without Instagram, without Facebook, any of that stuff? The fear of God still spread throughout the land. And everyone understood that when God's people showed up in a place that they were going, you better get out of the way because they're about to do something. See, the, the God of the Old Testament, people feared him. The God of the New Testament, people feared him. I wish people in the year 2022 still feared him because he's still the same God then as he is now, as he'll be forevermore. And I'm afraid that the enemy has kind of flipped the script on us. And all of a sudden now, we're so afraid of the enemy, but the enemy should be afraid of the one we serve. Because the one I serve is still greater than any fear that I have of the enemy. I'm still more than a conqueror. I was more than a conqueror in the Old Testament, the New Testament, and praise God, I'm going to go home more than a new conqueror. Amen. And so all of a sudden now, back in the day when people were afraid of God, there was this reverential fear and they served him because they knew how holy and righteous and upright he was. Those Jericho people, they were scared. 
And so they built these walls, huge walls. And they said in the Bible, in Joshua, it says that they didn't let anybody go in and they didn't let anybody go out. Because the fear of God should dictate the way we move. Because the way we move, if we dictate, is that dictated by the fear of God and not by the fear of man, we would be walking a whole lot differently than we walk today. And so the Israelites were all on their way to the land of Jericho, and they looked at Jericho, and they saw the walls, and the Jericho people looked out, and they saw the Israelites coming, and they knew that all of a sudden, this wasn't going, this wasn't going to be good for them. And so now we know the story, and then so what did the people, and I heard this answer, what did the people or the Israelites, what did they do around those walls? March. They marched. And the Bible says that they marched, they marched six, six days. And they were silent. Some of y'all would have been eliminated from that right away. Some of y'all can't go six seconds without talking. I appreciate it though. I appreciate the amens and I appreciate, I appreciate this, this relationship we have. Six days they walked. They marched around that wall. I don't know how big of a marching, I don't know how, how long we're out. I'm sure it wasn't short. And since for six days they marched in silence. And then the Bible says, that on the seventh day, after the seventh trip around, seven days, seven trips of marching, they were commanded to do what? They were commanded to shout. Amen. Some of y'all be eliminated from that as well because y'all too embarrassed to shout. But they were, uh, they were asked to shout. In fact, the Bible says in Joshua 6, 16, here's what it says. It says the seventh time around, and this is on the seventh day, as the priests sounded the long blast on their horns, Joshua commanded the people, shout, it says, exclamation mark, shout, for the Lord has given you the town. I want you to think about it for a second. The shout came prior, beforehand, before any wall started cracking, they had to shout. They, they, they had to shout before any rock began to crumble. They, they had to shout before any sense of movement in that wall occurred. They had to shout before any victory was ever given. They had to shout as if the victory was on its way. They shouted. Not because of a current victory or a past victory. They shouted because of the future victory that God had promised to them. It's like this. You go to your favorite restaurant and you order your favorite steak. And as the steak is being delivered to you, you begin to salivate. Not because you've tasted the steak, but you know within a short amount of time, you're about to indulge yourself and make yourself sit. You're not going to leave one out. Not one piece of that steak is going to be left on that plate. You, 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 be, you get ready because you know you're, you're, about, you're about to eat. And they, they shout it. They, they shout it. Not because of their weaponry. Not, not because of the sheer numbers that they were getting ready to go up against Jericho because they were outnumbered. No, they, they shouted because they trusted the unconventional warfare that God was going to. But they shouted because they trusted that God would do what he said they'd do. And they shouted because they knew on the other side of that wall, there were people afraid of them. And when you know the enemy is afraid of you, you can walk on the battlefield a lot different than if you walk on the battlefield in fear. Amen. They shout it. They shout it. Man, that's not very, I, you know, I'd be a little nervous to be shouting because then they, they, they might be shooting arrows over that wall. They may be doing all these things to that they shout it because sometimes what we want to do, we want to just sneak through the enemy's territory and maybe we can get out of there before he ever knows we're there and we don't want to disrupt anything or disturb anything or, you know, we don't want him picking on us or calling us bad names or, or we don't want any of this. We don't want any fiery darts coming our way because then all of a sudden we got to resist them. We don't, we don't want any of that. We don't, we want the enemy to just leave. Leave us alone. But God told his people, you go right outside his door, you knock real, real loud, and you shout, and you tell him you're getting ready to come in. And the reason they did that, because they knew the enemy was scared. They knew it. They knew it. 
There'll be some of us that would be checking our pockets to see if we had the, enough slingshots. There would be some of us checking to whether we had a sharp enough sword. There'll be some of us just checked out and we'd be running the other way because we would question whether or not the shout would really destroy the walls. But my Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1, 27, it says that God chooses the, the foolish things to shame the, the wise. He, he chooses the powerless to shame the powerful. He chooses the things despised and rejected. And he, he chooses things that no one ever considers important. And as a result of that, not one of you, not me, not no, nobody's going to boast about this victory except Christ Jesus himself. Because it's going to be possible by him and for him and only by him. And so all of a sudden now the people, they, they began to walk and they were told to shout as if the battle had already been won. You know how the Bible, that, that's that favorite psalm that we all like to quote, Psalm 23. It says, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. He begins to prepare a table before you ever get the chance to eat to let you know that dinner's on its way. So just sit down and relax because he's got this under control. He was preparing a table right before the walls of Jericho. And all they had to do was shout and he would then lay the steak dinner in front of them so they could feast. But they had to shout. And so what did they do? Not a trick question. What did they do? They shouted. They shouted. They shout it. And all of a sudden, once they shouted, the walls began to crumble. And the victory that was promised was given. Because my Bible says there in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering that all should come to repentance. That means my Bible says that God doesn't sleep nor does he slumber on his promises. What he promises will be given. And he promised that the walls would fall and the town would be given if and only if they shouted like they were in control of the situation because they served a controlling God. But they couldn't let the enemy silence the shout. And I wonder how many of them on day seven when they were told you got to shout. How, how many of them thought? I don't know. Because if, if we shout too loud, if, if, if I'm not a shouter, God. I'm a quieter. That's not a word. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a shouter. Uh, I, I like staying in control. And I like being composed. And I don't want my neighbor to think I'm crazy. I'm not a shouter, God. I'm not a shouter. And it, but can't we do this another way? Because if you ask me to shout, that means I have to participate in the service. And I've got to act like, I, don't make me shout. God, don't make me shout. Let, let me just stay silent, God. Don't make me shout. Because I, I don't want to really get involved in this. God, don't make me shout. I wonder how many of them, when they started walking around that on the seventh time, and they almost got through the seventh lap, they looked at one another and said, are you shouting? I, I don't know if I'm shouting. Are you shouting? Because that's what's going to happen. They, they were normal people. You, you, you shout. How loud are you going to shout? I don't really want to shout that loud. You, like, you know, if you don't shout loud, I won't shout loud. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what they do. If you won't raise your hand, I'm going to raise my hand. You can raise, we'll raise our hand halfway. Can we hold hands? But like, that's what they did. I, I can see it. I can see them being church people walking around that walls thinking, oh, praise Jesus. I don't want to shout to them. But then what if we shout in the walls? Just stand there and they look up on top of the walls like we're crazy. What if they call, what if they shout back at us? What are we going to do? What, what are we going to do? God said, just shout, just shout, just shout, just shout, just shout, just, just act like, it. just shout, just shout. Joe, I, Joe, where are you, where are you getting, what are you doing? I don't really, I, I don't understand what you're saying. So let's get to the sermon today. That's just the introduction. Let's get to the sermon. <laughs> Sermon's short. We're going to get out here early today. Sermon's short. I've said that before. Luke, Luke, Luke 18, verse 35. It says, as Jesus approached Jericho. Now, you know the background of Jericho. You understand the story of Jericho. And if you look at your history books, history tells us, and we're not counting the Bible right now. We're, we're counting. We're, eliminate the Bible. I mean, I don't really, but just right now, 
Go think about the Bible. History tells us. History tells us that there's a really good chance that Jericho was formed in the 1500 BCs. And history tells us that they had walls around Jericho, believe it or not. History tells us that. And if I'm, if I had to guess that when Jesus now approaches Jericho, he would have been the only one that was around when the walls of Jericho were formed. Because God himself was there and now this man named Jesus who's fully God but fully man in the flesh because the word became flesh and dwelt among them. So now Jesus remembers as he's approaching Jericho, he remembers how his father intervened all because of a shout. And so he approaches Jericho being the only one that really remembers. You know how stories go when you play that game and everybody tells a story and it changes after the, for the first person. Jesus was an eyewitness to what Jericho was 1,500 years ago. He had been there. He had done that. He, under, he understood. And so as he approaches Jericho, he knows what Jericho was. And he knows what brought the walls down. He remembers it. He remembers when his father gave them the message to shout. He remembers it. My God does not forget. Except when you ask for forgiveness. And then he forgets it as far as the east is from the west, praise God. He doesn't forget and so when he approached Jericho, because here's what, here, here's what history books tell us. History books tell us in the 1500 BCs that Jericho built these walls and all of a sudden there was a violent earthquake that was responsible for the walls to come down. If you ever want to shake the foundation of your enemy, you will learn to shout and the walls will fall down. I don't know what caused the earthquake, but I have a really good guess that it was a shout from the Christian people that now the enemy began to understand that their foundation was about to get destroyed. So history tells us it's an earthquake. My Bible tells me it was a shout. And so Jesus now is approaching Jericho and he understood and he understands that a shout destroyed an obstacle that the enemy had placed in the path of his people. Jesus is approaching Jericho. See, see a shout? A, a shout is a proclamation that the steak dinner is on its way. Not, this, not that the steak's in front of you and you're eating. It's on its way. See, a, a shout a shout is the, the, the promise that the table is being set for you and, and you know that something's about to happen. A, a, a shout is, is when you begin to trust that yes, there are still walls in your life, but you know beyond a shadow of a doubt when God says to move, those walls are going to move. A shout is knowing that the promise has been spoken. It just hasn't been given yet. And a spoken promise is good as a given promise. A shout is going to tell you that no, I am weeping tonight. I've got joy in the morning. A shout is telling you that you trust and you believe in the faithfulness of God Almighty. Listen, Jesus understood. Come on now. A shout determined Jericho. Yeah, and it was a shout before anything ever happened. His people trusted them. He, his people trusted him to bring those walls down. Hallelujah. All because of a shout. As Jesus approached Jericho, a <laughs> blind beggar was sitting beside the road. When he heard the noise of a crowd going past, he asked what was happening. They told him that Jesus the Nazarene was going by. So he began shouting. He, he, be, he began Shout. Now listen, Jesus was there 1,500 years ago and he understood what a shout did. And all of a sudden now Jesus is approaching a land that was victorious because of a shout. And as he's walking through the crowd, it was loud. But all of a sudden there was a louder voice. There was a shout that happened. 
And he began shouting that Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then there was that one annoying person in the crowd that looked at that blind beggar and said, would you just be quiet? That one person that tried to discourage that one person that tried to disappoint, that one person that told you don't raise your hand because everybody's going to think you're crazy, that one person that said you shouldn't act that way, that one person that said, well, no, that, 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 there was that one person that said, you need to be quiet. The people in front of him yelled at him because the world always tries to silence the voice of God's people. They always will. They always have. They're always going to. But watch what the blind beggar did. But he only... Shouted louder. You better look at your neighbor right now and say, I'm about to shout, so hold your ears. Because, because, because if you don't shout, I'm shouting for you. The blind beggar sitting in Jericho, a land that was victorious because of a shout. The Son of God begins to move through that land, and he begins to shout. Listen, after 1,500 years... I don't know if the land had been silent for a while, because you know how it is after you get a victory, then the enemy comes in and tries to steal that victory, and all of a sudden what you used to shout about, now you can't really even really remember it, and he tries to take it from you so you can't claim it, like you used to put your Ebenezer down, but it's like the enemy has picked up your stone so you can't even find where it was. And so maybe after 1,500 years, the people understood what a shout was and how the walls came down. And maybe they stopped telling the story about how good God was and what he was going to do. And maybe their faith was weakened. And maybe over time, maybe over time, they forgot the goodness of God. And now all of a sudden, Jesus the Nazarene, the son of David, begins to move through the crowd. And one of God's chosen. Joel, how do you know he was chosen? I am so glad you asked that question. Because here's what Luke 4.18 tells me. This is Jesus speaking himself. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see. This was one of God's chosen. This is why he was coming. This was who he was there for. And he's walking through the land of Jericho. And all of a sudden now a person that physically can't see begins to shout. When he shouted, could he see right then? No. When he shouted, was his vision restored? No. After the first shout, did Jesus turn around and look at him? No. No. After the first shout, did he get some rebuke from the crowd? Yes. After the first shout, was his faith tested? Yes. After the first shout, could he have been silent then because everyone told him to stop shouting? Yes. But what he did, he shouted once, and when he realized the wall hadn't started to crumble yet, what did he do? He shouted louder because he understood that there was one in the midst of him that had promised to restore sight to the blind, and he wasn't letting Jesus get away from him until he could see again. And he shouted. And I wonder in your life, I wonder how many times that there are walls that you are facing. There are mountains that may moved. There are obstacles in the way. And you think the enemy has put them around you because the enemy is so strong and they're doing so many things and da 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 da. But maybe we need to be reminded that the reason that the obstacles are in the way, not because the enemy is so powerful, but he is so f afraid of you because he knows that if he can silence your shout, then the walls will stand. But as soon as you begin to shout in praise, making sure that you're trusting the promise, as soon as you get a little bit of authority back in your life, those walls cannot stand. They have to come down. Yes. Don't, don't, yes. don't. Don't let the world, don't, don't silence the shout. Hallelujah. And so now all of a sudden, this blind man is yelling. He's shouting. 1,500 years ago, there was a shout. Now all of a sudden, Jesus hears him. And this is like Jesus turning around, and now the stake's on its way. And all of a sudden now, the man begins to salivate. Why? Because he knows his shout of praise has gained the attention of the Most High. Because if you want God's attention, start to praise Him. If you want God's favor to turn on you, start to worship Him. If you want to see all the magnificent, magnificent things God can do, start glorifying Him. Start putting God in a place of authority and watch what you are praised and shouting and worship and singing. Watch what you can do when you start shouting to the one on high. 
you, 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 you seem blind today? Meaning you don't know what tomorrow, where you're going tomorrow. You, you feel like you're spiritually lost. You feel like this. You feel like that. And you feel like the enemy start to shout. I've been praying. Stop praying. Start shouting. I, I, I've been I've been pleading. Stop stop pleading. Start shouting. I, I've been I've been so I've been mourning and fasting. Okay, I know all those are good. Start shouting now. Amen. Start shouting. Not that the victory is right in front, but the yeah. victory is on its way. Shout as if you know, because you should know. Because my God is undefeated. He is the champion. He's never lost a battle. He is yeah. going to be the same God that tore down Jericho. He can tear it down in your life today. Amen. Start shouting. Amen. Start Amen. shouting. Start shouting. But we live in a crazy world. Shout louder. Amen. Start sh sh shout, shout louder. I, I, so what, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? What do you mean shout? I mean, I want you to praise. I, I, I want you to worship. I, I, I want you to know that you can shout in authority that God Amen. hears. Because my Bible is very clear that his ear is inclined to the voice of his sheep and the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. There is a relationship there. Just shout. Just shout. I think God's people need to begin to clear their throat again and to shout. I, I think that we, we need to trust the victories on the way and begin to shout. I, I think that we need to stop looking at the walls of Jericho and start looking up where our strength comes from and shouting. Yeah. And we need to stop allowing the world to dictate our shout yeah. because they're going to try to silence it. Hallelujah. And why will the enemy silence the shout? Because they know when you start to praise your Savior, yeah. they know that walls begin to fall. They know it. It's been proven. And so all of a sudden now, God's people began to find their voice. And that one, that one guy, he begins to yell out, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and ordered that the man be brought to him. As the man came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want from me? Well, God, I want to see. And Jesus said, all right. Notice that the praise came before the breakthrough. And he said, you receive your, your sight, your faith has healed you. Instantly the man could see and he followed Jesus. He kept on shouting. He shouted before, he shouted during, and he shouted afterwards. Because the more you shout after walls come down, it prevents walls from being built back up. Think about it. If you just keep on shouting, it's really hard for Jericho to build walls. Because the shout will bring them down and the shout will keep them down. The problem is so often we get the victory, we stop our shouting, and then the enemy has a little bit of leeway to start building walls up. And now our shout is silenced. We just need to shout all the time. Just yeah. shout. Yeah. Just praise and praise and praise. Even if the victory is not yeah. right in yeah. front of you, yeah. you praise knowing yeah. that the victory yeah. will be there when you need the victory. <laughs> When Jesus walked the face of this earth, later on, we know how the Bible says that the, the Palm Sunday he was riding in. And the, what did they tell the oldest people? Stop telling them to do this. And Jesus said, if they don't shout, the rocks are going to shout. You know what? I think the rocks took that pretty personal that day. Because here's what happens. Jesus gets on the cross of Calvary in Matthew 27, 50. And it says with a loud voice, I consider that a shout. So Jesus shouted and he yielded up the ghost and other gospels. He shouted and said, it is finished. He shouted to let the rock know that he was on his way. He shouted before the victory had ever happened because at that point he hadn't entered the hell, uh, hell and taken away the keys. He shouted to let Satan know his walls were about to come down. He shouted to let him know he was going to knock on the door and take key, the hell of death and the grave with him. He shouted to let the enemy know that this victory was about to be won. And he shouted to let the two know that the stone that had been rolled in front of him could only stay for so long. And when he shouted some more, that thing was was going to have to roll out of the way because he had places to be and people to meet and that stone was not holding him back because there was a table that he had to set before the presence of our enemies. Amen. He shouted to let everyone know on the cross of Calvary it was finished. He shouted. He shouted. Jericho started with the shout. Jericho ended with the shout. 
Your life should start with a shout, that shout that says, Lord, I am a sinner. Hallelujah. And you should be shouting all the way home, yes. that home, knowing that you are a sinner saved by grace. Yes. And because of the goodness of God, there is victory for you. Hallelujah. Just shout. Hallelujah. Just shout. Don't let the world, don't let a per don't let anybody, don't silence the shout. Hallelujah. Because the shout is what brings walls down. Yes. 